Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. I'm Joey McWilliams. I am privileged today to be joined on the summit by Trent Hillbrands, a senior at Northwestern. Trent, uh, it's been a wild year. I know we want to talk about that a little bit more. And there are ups and downs. You had a big up on Saturday, though, coming away with an overtime victory at Doan. One I know the team needed to 18 and 8 on the season now, 10 and 6 in GPAC play. You get the big conference win. And let me set it up just a little bit so you can talk about it. You take Doned overtime. Actually, they took you all to overtime at home. A tight contest. They were up by seven at one point. They're up by four in the closing minutes, uh, closing minute of that extra session. You scored the final five points, including a three-pointer with 13 seconds left that ultimately proved to be the game winner. Trent, a big win this weekend. Talk about that. Yeah, that was a it was a huge win. Going to Doan, we always have a ton of troubles going there. They've <laughs> they kind of got a goofy setup with the black court there. It's just a lot – it's different than a, a lot of different places. So it makes it difficult. But um, you mentioned scoring the final five points. Um, uh, we wouldn't have even been to that point if I make the second free throw of a one-and-one. One. Uh, we would have. I, I wasn't going to tell that. I wasn't going to well, tell that. <laughs> I'm not going to let it down, though. I mean, <laughs> it haunts me still. Um, we could have been home an hour earlier. But, yeah, it was a, it was a great win for us. Um they're Dylan's a good team. They've really gotten better as the season's gone on. Um, just shout out to that Josiah Gardner for Dylan. He's having a really good year. He's, at the beginning of the year, he struggled a little bit, but he's really come on strong. He's having a heck of a year. Um, but even at the Alex Oberhauser for Dylan, he had 38 and 16. Um, just kind of went off against us. We couldn't guard him. But yeah, Dylan's a really good team. They're a tough matchup because they're so big. Um, but yeah, it was a great win for us, and hopefully we can c- carry that momentum into the following weeks. Well, talk about then too. You, you're talking about playing against Doan. Of course, the GPAC is a very tough league. You all ten and six. You had a couple of losses against very good opponents. You're in the middle of a road swing right now, anyway. Uh, a loss against Morningside, a loss against Jamestown. Again, very good programs there. The, the win against Doan was really what you needed, and if you weren't already. Uh, if you hadn't already qualified and gotten your berth in the GPAC tournament, that pretty much did it for you all. So, so the postseason definitely is a part of what you're looking at. Talk about this wild year. Yeah, it's just it feels like no none of the teams in GPAC want to win the conference. If, I mean, <laughs> everyone just keeps beating up on each other. I mean, Briarcliff they've surprised a lot of people, but they're just getting the job done. It's never it's never an, a good looking win for them. They do a lot of ugly things, but it, I mean, they're getting the job done and they're staying on top of the conference, but everyone's just beating up on each other. Morningside's always a good team. Jamestown, they have a lot of good players. I mean, Mason Walters is up for possibly national player of the year. Um, Dort, they got some young talent that's really coming along. Um, Doan's good. I mean, there's just a lot of really good teams and we're all just beating up on each other. I mean, we're, I think we're tied for third right now, but we're also, a loss away from being in seventh place. So, I mean, it's just crazy how you can feel good one day and then the next day it's like, wow, we're, we got a lot of work to do. So, I mean, that's just kind of where we're at. We're just trying to get better every day, um, keep improving, trying to stay healthy. Um, we've definitely got some talent. I mean, I'd say we have nothing against Walters or anyone else, but I think Alex McCall's the best player in our conference. He's, he's been an absolute stud. Um, he does a lot of great things for us and he's a, awesome to play with so it's just it's been a crazy year it's been a lot of fun though being able to battle against a lot of really good teams and by the way that's nothing against mason walters he is a fantastic player but you have to stand up for your teammates so that that's fine you gotta you you get to promote just a little bit here that's all right 33 points by the way in that overtime victory against doan and and 33 of what is now more than 2,000 points you crossed a big milestone against morningside recently crossed the 2,000 point plateau the eighth player in program history at Northwestern to get to do that. Talk about what that means. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a pretty cool honor. Um, I've When I came to Northwestern, I, I had an older brother that went to Northwestern as well, so I kind of knew the tradition that was with, with the program, and um, I always kind of eyed those guys at the top of the list, and it's kind of kind of fun to kind of be mentioned with some of them because there's a lot of great players, and even some of our coaches, um, Ben Miller and Colin Coima, um, I just I passed Ben a couple weeks ago, and it's kind of fun just um, messing around with him, talking to him about that <laughs> a little bit. And then Colton, he's obviously he scored I think twenty four hundred points. It's so it's cool just to be mentioned in the same category as those guys. I mean, those are legends in Northwestern history, and 
Um, it's just really fun. Um, a lot of people say COVID year, fifth year. I mean, that helps. But, I mean, look at it. I didn't play freshman year. So I always said I wish I would have redshirted. So it kind of kind of equals out, and I could use the COVID year as a redshirt year. So it's, it's awesome to be able to reach that milestone. But um, the main reason why I wanted to come back was so I could play with the guys and battle again. So it's the 2,000 points is an awesome milestone, but there's a lot of work to be done yet. Well, congratulations on the opportunity to get to come back and to cross that milestone. And it's one of those things, too, when when the time does come that you hang up the uniform, I mean, it's it's up there. And so you want to make the most of every opportunity. We're speaking now with Trent Hillbrands here on Midwest Sports Net. And I encourage you, please do consider subscribing to the channel as we talk a lot of small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Uh, the 33 points that you have against Doan, your fourth 30-point game of the season – and I want to ask you about that too. You guys, it seems like the team is, it's one team at home, one team on the road, 11 and one at home, seven and seven on the road. However, you've kind of flipped the script a little bit. Three of your four 30 point games came outside of Orange City. So uh, talk about playing at home on the road. What's the difference? Yeah, I mean, we've kind of said that a lot lately. I mean, we've kind of had a road stretch here and we've kind of said we got to start getting the job done on the road because at home we're a tough team to beat. Um, we've had, I think we've lost once at home against Briarcliff, who's obviously a top of the conference. But at home, we're, we've are we been a tough team to beat, which is awesome. That's what you want to do. You want to protect home court. But we also don't have many wins on the road, which is huge. Any win on the road is is very important, and we got to start finding more wins on the road. <laughs> um, so just being able to win that one on Do- at Doan was huge, and hopefully that carries into – we go to another tough place at the Corn Palace, Dakota Westland. Um, that's another very tough place to play. Um, but we'd love to try to carry that momentum on the road and try to get that one as well. But you mentioned me scoring 30 points on the road a couple times. Uh, I, something I don't even really think of, but um, I just try to light a spark when our team needs it. So it's been fun trying to – I mean, the, the couple times I've done it, it's been kind of close games. I think two of them have been overtime. So it's been fun to be able to have big games and – um, go out on top on those games too. So just being able to help my team out is, it's kind of fun. You talked about the tradition at, at Northwestern and of course it's a family tradition for you. There is a lot of tradition there and getting to be a part of that program. I know you're not ready to hang the Jersey up just yet. And I, and again, I'm not trying to close the book on your career. I mean, we mentioned this a couple times already, not, not yet. You have a few more games to play that in mind though, you have spent a lot of time there What's it been like for you? Talk about your time playing at Northwestern. And not only that, but for uh, for Coach Chris Corver, who is a longtime coach, and his next win will be his 500th win there. So that, that's a big deal. Talk about those things. Yeah, it's been a complete – it's been an honor playing at Northwestern. Uh, coach Corver is a legend. He's done a lot of great things, a couple of national championships, about to have his 500th win. Um, we better be able to get that this year, otherwise something went wrong. <laughs> Um, but it's been, it's been an absolute blast. Like I said, there's been so many great players that have gone through the, gone through the system. It's just an honor to be able to be part of it. Um, it's such a family thing. Like you mentioned, my older brother went there. Um, I actually have a younger sister that's going to be attending Northwestern next, next fall as well. So that's, it's pretty cool just to see, um, how welcoming everyone is, how loving everyone is. And we have such a great community support. Um, you go to a lot of games on the road and, there's maybe a quarter of the stands are halfway full. And we, we do a good job of filling our Boltman Center. It's it's a great atmosphere. It's a great place to play. Um, it's just a lot of fun. I mean, the tradition's amazing. You look around most gyms, and they have uh, national tournament banners hanging up all over the place. It's just appearances. The only thing we hang up is Final Four banners, which is kind of crazy to think about because we have a lot of banners hanging up. We've um, from men's side to women's side to football, we have we've had a lot of success at Northwestern, and it's awesome to be a part of it. Um, it'd be fun to hang another one of those banners up, but we'll see what happens in the next couple months. Well, you may have the opportunity. Of course, the regular season just four games remain on the schedule for you. You will be playing in the GPAC tournament to follow that, and then we'll see what happens as you've been able to make it to the NC in in AIA tournament three times in your four years that were there. I know one of those was your freshman year, and then one of them was the, the, the COVID time, which was an abrupt halt to everything. But that's in the past. So you're looking ahead right now. Four games remain, two on the road, 
two at home. Talk about then the end of this season and, and what it, what you all need to do to put yourself in a good position to close this year out. Yeah, I mean, obviously it'd be great to win out. I mean, that would set us up to put us in a great position to finish top half of the conference and all those good things. But it's going to be tough. I mean, there's some, a lot of good teams, like I mentioned earlier, going to Dakota Westlands is never easy. The Corn Palace – for whatever reason, it's kind of a weird place to play. It's they're crazy. They got a great atmosphere there. It's fun to play there, but it's just hard to win. So that'll be a tough one. Um, Mount Marty, they took us to overtime earlier this year. Their record's not great, but I I would say they're the best two win com, two win conference team in the country. I mean, they're they're good. They're a good team. Um, but that'll be fun. It's parents' night, seniors' day. Um, it'll be a good atmosphere there. But then we go Dort at home and. If you don't know anything about <clears throat> the Dort Northwestern rivalry, it's it's crazy. I mean, we're about ten miles from each other, so it's a lot. We've all played each other growing up. We all we've it's just a huge rivalry. The whole county comes. It's it's a great atmosphere. It's packed house. It's a ton of fun, but I expect to beat those guys. I it's always a fun matchup, but winning that one's always a little more fun. And then yeah. we got, we got a tough road trip to Hastings after that, which is never easy because it's a good five-hour drive so but it'd be awesome to win win out and set ourselves up for a good spot in the conference play but we just gotta go out there and do our best and see what happens well and again the five-hour road trip is the the season finale but you have to expect to win you've got to go in expecting to win those games no matter how tough they are trent uh final final home game that'll be wednesday february 16th again that's uh, taking on dort and then after that we'll see what happens but it has been a, a a pleasure getting to visit with you and and again fantastic season fantastic career not over yet still a few more games yet to play we look forward to seeing how the red raiders do as northwestern wraps up its season trent a super senior getting to uh suit up just a few more times success to you as the season close out thanks you so much for taking time with us here on the summit today on midwest sports net thank you i appreciate it appreciate you supporting small college basketball doesn't get enough love so appreciate all you do for us